G'day guys and gal. Arguably the most impactful faction on the outcome of the end times were the Skaven. They wiped out the southern realms, Araby, most of the dwarves, most of the empire, the lizardmen and more. If anything, Arkan should have gotten on his knees and showed his gratitude to the great horned rat as without the Skaven's shenanigans, Chaos probably wouldn't have gotten past Kislev. Because of this, it's easy to say, Major Kill, why bother trying to fix the Skaven end times? The Skaven beat everyone. They were the winners. All the Skaven fans are happy. But they really aren't, mate. A lot of you guys are Skaven fans, yet almost everyone dislikes the end times, despite the Skaven coming out on top. Why is that? Let me explain in simple terms. We don't love John Wick because of how easily he kills everyone, we love John Wick because of how gritty and hardcore he is. John gets shot, stabbed, run over, falls off a building, and he gets really, really hurt. It creates high stakes for the character that keeps us engaged. Same with using cheats in a game. You think it will make the game fun because you can just cream through everyone, but after 15 minutes you're bored because there's zero satisfaction. The Skaven were given cheats and abused them, which made their victory feel really hollow. It was almost like an insult to Skaven players that the millennia of struggle against the forces of order wasn't due to their enemy being powerful, it was just because they didn't know how to play nice and share toys with each other. I'll be honest, I was pretty intimidated to make this video because the Skaven had their filthy rat fingers in everyone's honeypot during the end times, so there was so much lore to dive into and try and correct, but I figured out how to go about this. What we'll do is that plot points that involve the Skaven and another faction will be skimmed over during this video, but mentioned as I will save the details of these plot points for other factions fixing the end times videos. For example, I have taken a deep dive at my version of the conflict between Tilia and the Skaven during my Southern Realms Fixing the End Times video, so in this video we will not spend too much time there. This is so I don't end up repeating myself and the video doesn't blow up to be some retarded length of time. If that makes sense. As in my other videos, for better or worse, I cannot change major plot points, only minor details and subplots. The goal is not to rewrite the end times, but to change various parts of it to make the whole a lot more tolerable, and hopefully even at times even enjoyable. I plan on making one of these videos for every single faction, which is really starting to test my ability to maintain continuity and get everything correct, but mama didn't raise no bitch. Once I've made a video for all the relevant factions and races, I will then create one massive end times video which is just my version. As before, I highly recommend you guys check out my End Times Explained video where I explain what actually happens in canon during the End Times so you have context on how badly Games Workshop cooked it. Going through my other videos in this series will also help fill in any gaps about the Skaven this video might offer, as well as the fact that they're just super entertaining videos. Also, a new highly detailed Skaven hentai available soon to my Patreon. Only $1 per month gives you access to everything. Terms and conditions apply. Let's get into it. When the end times began kicking off, the Skaven were doing what they usually do, bickering, fighting, and insulting each other's mothers. The Council of Thirteen knew that the world was filling with the powers of the warp, and now was the time to do something spicy. They just couldn't agree on what kind of spice. To help speed up this process, their god, the Great Horned Rat himself, appeared during the Council and killed the Seer Lord of the Council for being a useless twat. He was then sort of like, Sort your shit out, conquer the planet, you basement dwelling degenerates, before then vanishing. But Major Kill, why didn't the Great Horned Rat appear before to this Skaven to work together? Shut your naive prepubescent whore mouth to me before I shove warpstone down all your orifices. Oh, that actually sounds quite nice. Yuck, you filthy Skaven wannabe. The Great Horned Rat was finally able to materialize in the world briefly due to the increased warp activity going on. The Great Horned Rat is literally just another warp entity, so he can't just appear in the world willy-nilly. To help the Skaven stay on track as well as buff them a bit more, the Great Horned Rat also deployed all of his vermin lords to act as commanders and enforcers to the Skaven army. Now in terms of the Skaven beginning to the end times, this is fine. Nothing short of divine intervention was going to get the Skaven to work together, hence that is what they got. 
The Skaven proceed to break up into different forces, one of these forces attacking and easily destroying all the neighbouring southern realm kingdoms over the course of a couple sentences in canon. However, in my version, Clan Skyra and Clan Ashin invade the neighbouring kingdoms of Tabaro, Estalia, Tilia and the Border Princes, who are able to put up a good fight against the Skaven due to the Dogs of War joining the war effort, as well as some basic common sense for some of the southern realms. In the end, the forces of the southern realms are beaten and massacred, but they're able to slow the Skaven armies down significantly and buy more time for the Empire and Bretonia. Deathmaster Schnick is also able to have some time out of the shadows as he viciously murders some named characters in my version. Clan Pestilence and various minor clans invade Lustria as detailed in my Fixing the End Times Lizardman video. In canon, that results in the destruction of Lustra and the Southlands and the removal of the Lizardmen from the setting, whilst the Skaven only suffer the death of most of Clan Pestilence and no important characters, which is just stupid. In my version, the moon still explodes and wiped out Lustra and the Southlands, as well as the majority of the Lizardmen and their characters. However, a number of Lizardmen are teleported to the Old World, including Krokgar, Gorok, and Oxaltal, whilst the entirety of Clan Pestilence and their vassal clans die, as well as the death of Lord Skrog, Deathmaster Schnick, and the Vermin Lord in charge of the operation. I actually highly recommend checking that video out, a lot of people said the Mazdamundi death scene got them really emotional. As you can see in my version, the result is mostly the same, the Lizardmen being defeated, however the victory is way more costly to the Skaven, like it should be, and there is still a small group of fan favourite Lizards who can still participate in the final battle of Middenheim. Clan Moors, led by Queek Headtaker, takes the fight to the Dawi, and just like in canon, and my version, they're able to cause massive damage to the Dwarves, resulting in the death of their High King Thorgrim Grudgebearer. The only real difference is that in canon, Thorgrim dies pathetically, whilst in my version, he goes out like a boss. Puric victory after Puric victory, the Skaven sink their teeth into the world, because that's what the Skaven do. They die, and they die, and they die, until they eventually win. As in canon, the Skaven hordes would invade Araby, Cathay, and Nippon, and Ind. However, I have some naughty little plans for those factions that will deviate from canon significantly. The best part of those factions having piss or lore is there's a lot of room for mine. Who says Skaven even have to beat those factions? Now, you might be like, at this point, Major Kill, where is the nectar of this video? Give me some actual Skaven lore improvements, not just references to Skaven parts in your other videos. And yeah, fair enough, let's fucking do it. Everyone's favourite Rodan Thankful is made Sea Lord by the Vermin Lords, despite the fact that Hayati's ass kicked more times than I punched Timmy last night. This is likely due to the fact that he's an extremely powerful magic user and also very easy to manipulate. The Vermin Lord's two favourite things. Once again, I'm okay with this. Having a known character as the Sea Lord makes total sense and the reasoning matches up pretty well with Skaven logic. Just to be clear, this video isn't so much about fixing the fact that the Skaven shut on everyone, and more just making it a deserving win whilst paying respects to both sides of the war. Destroying sub-factions is cool and all, but that wasn't the cheese the Skaven were chasing. The Empire of Man was what they really wanted to bring down, and boy oh boy did they put in some work. But once again, in canon it just feels empty. Their victories were just a rinse and repeat of attacking the city from the sewers. Even the legendary Black Powder City of Norm fell reasonably easily to such an attack, which just doesn't sit well with me. So let's start there. Norn was the Empire's ammo and had a crapload of Black Powder, powder that the Skaven wanted. In canon, the Skaven invade and destroy most of the city. The Empire defenders rally a defense and then Thankful appears and just overcasts doom and darkness and the Empire army just routs. Let's make it more fun. With all the chaotic events in the world, as well as the news of the Skaven armies invading the cities of the southern realms, the Empire had been placed on high alert. You can only attack from the sewers so many times before people start putting thicker metal grates on it, or in Norn's case, oil and black powder. The Skaven weren't as stupid either, hence they launched a two-pronged assault. Now just before the battle, Thankwell sneezed and accidentally summoned Screech Vermin King, the most powerful Vermin Lord to act as his advisor slash puppet master. So the rats had a powerful unit on the battlefield. 
The first Skaven army was made up of mostly of monsters and artillery that struck at the walls of Norm. Rousing the defenders of the city as they begun returning fire with their massive droves of cannons and mortars. The city was alight with green and red fire as black powder fought against Warpstone. The second Skaven invasion exploded from the sewers and instantly began attacking the local populace and guards. In response to this new attack, Grand Marshal Eckstein, the Lion of Nuln, shouted, EAT DEATH! before firing a well-placed shot into one of the black powder traps near the entrance to the main sewer. The Skaven warlord who witnessed it could only say, Oh shit shit! before the flames of vengeance burnt him to ashes. Within seconds, the entire city of Nuln lit up with the fires of oil, black powder and screaming rats. Thousands were incinerated in seconds, the fires even triggering various warp bombs that the Skaven had been planting, making them blow up prematurely, causing even more destruction. Despite the Skaven suffering more than the Nuln defenses from the chaos, the city's defenses had been cracked as the walls buckled from the sustained warpstone artillery as well as Thankor's magic. The Lion grouped up his forces in the market square as the Skaven poured into the city. Each meter of ground they claimed was answered with the gun lines of Nuln as the Skaven soon found that their greatest obstacle wasn't their enemy but the corpses of their fallen comrades. All over the city resistance broke out as mercenaries, flagellants and even the citizens joined the battle for their lives. The legendary steam tank the Deliverance emerged and smashed into the Skaven flank while the unbreakable defenders of Nuln held the line. Thankwell soon found his magic countered by various Empire Wizards, as well as a number of well-placed sniper shots that had already killed a number of Greyseer minions. Thankwell was shocked. He had the numbers, monsters and magic to take the city, but had underestimated the resolve and preparation of the Imperial Defenders. Remember, the Skaven wanted to use the city resources for their own purposes, not just blow everything up. The Skaven wanted to. The Vermin Lords didn't care. With all the chaos that had been occurring, Screech focused on tearing into the black powder storages that lined the city, scattering as much of the highly explosive material as possible, ensuring they were all linked up together. As the icing on top of the cake, the Vermin Lord also infused the gunpowder with warpstone to give it that extra jazz. Satisfied that the orgy of destruction that was about to take place would be best viewed from afar, Screech then casually walked over to the panicky and annoying Thankful, grabbed him by the horn and dragged him out of the city as the Skaven keep trying to penetrate deeper into the lion's lines. As the forces of the Skaven begin to break under the might of Nol, the Vermin Lord screeches, EAT DEATH DEATH, before clicking his fingers and igniting the warp infused black powder. If the fires of the sewer lit up the city, the fire of the city lit up the entire empire. In an instant, the entire city erupted into a fireball that was visible from the towers of Althoff itself. The lion was roasted in his armor as he, his army, and the Skaven that had not gotten out of the city in time were melted into one big blob of charcoal and death in the ultimate act of, if we can't have it, neither can you. Thankful realized the extent of his bitchery to Screech, but is powerless to do anything about it, as the Vermin Lord then sends him off to parlay with Archaon, just like in canon. The Skaven assaulted every city that was worth attacking. The next on the menu was Altdorf, where the Emperor resided. Now Altdorf had already been turbo-raped pretty hard by the forces of Nurgle, who had basically spent their entire strength attempting to destroy it, only to be absolutely wrecked at the last second due to the winds of heaven combining with Kyle and nuking everything evil within the city. However, it was still heavily damaged, hence the Skaven surrounded it to try and take advantage of this due to the fact that they could bypass the anti-chaos measures as they weren't totally beans of chaos. Kyle really just couldn't catch a break on this one. In canon, the rats surround Altoff and just be a nuisance for a while, then Valton arrives, fights his way into Altoff, then gets out to north and goes and joins the forces of Mindenheim. Both times he punches through the Skaven line relatively easy, which you know makes sense, it's the avatar of Sigma after all. However, I think this is a great opportunity to set up an upcoming plot point that pissed off everyone, including Archaon. So in my version, Valton and his group of religious fanatics begin punching their way through the Skaven siege line, with the Skaven buckling due to the surprise of the attack, and you know, Sigma. As Valton nearly reaches Karl's force, a Vermin Lord explodes from the shadows and attacks Valton. The two demigods fight, 
as Valtan's army struggle to hold the Skaven back. They begin to get bogged down, when finally Valtan lands a massive uppercut from Galmraz into the jaw of the Vermin Lord, breaking his teeth and splintering his horn. Before Valtan can finish off the creature, it curses at him and vanishes into a plume of green smoke. The story progresses like in canon, with Valtan punching a hole through the Skaven forces once again and reaching Minheim, where the city is then attacked by chaos and a duel between Valtan and Archeon begins. Now in canon, Archeon is this unstoppable god of war, who pretty much effortlessly kills the best heroes that the world has to offer. In canon, him and Valtan fight, and all Valtan really manages to do is put a few dents in Archeon's shield, before Archeon cuts him up a bit, and then a vermin lord randomly appears, cut off Valtan's head, and then vanishes. This is the ultimate kill steal cop out, and I know exactly how we can fix this. In my version, Archeon and Valtan duel, with Valtan gaining the upper hand through a massive strike to Archeon's chest plate, which dismounts him off his demon horse. The two warriors trade blows, both covering each other in a dozen bleeding wounds and dents. Archeon thrusts and Valtan allows the blade to pierce deep into his flesh below his rib. In response, he smashes Galmaraz down hard on Archeon's sword hand, shattering the bones and staggering Archeon. He follows it with an uppercut from Galmaraz, which takes Archeon's helmet off and knocks him to the ground. As Valtan prepares to deliver the killing blow and stop the end times, the same vermin lord he humiliated at Altdorf materializes behind him and with one quick swipe takes Valtan's head clean off, getting his revenge. The subtle change to canon basically means that despite the result being the exact same, it makes a scene which was really pointless and frustrating into something more akin to a tragedy for the Empire and a plot of revenge for one of the Skaven. It shows the true grim darkness of Warhammer by having the literal chosen one about to fulfill his destiny and save the world, then killed by a cheap shot from a spiteful rat. In canon, it's not long after this that the Skaven meet with Chaos to discuss an alliance. In canon, Archeon is super salty about the Vermin Lord stealing his kill, and he takes it out on the Skaven diplomat who is hinted to be thankful. Archeon does have a sense of honor, and does not take kindly to having his jewels interrupted or skulls taken from him that are his. I am happy for this to remain canon, however we can make a tweak or two to it. In my version, it is confirmed explicitly that the Diplomat is indeed thankful, and Archeon will accept the offer of an alliance, and ask for an audience with the Vermin Lord that so graciously saved his life. The Vermin Lord will appear, its ego allowing itself to feel safe, and demands that Archeon kneel to him as a sign of thank you for saving him. This is where the Vermin Lord makes his error, as Archeon bows his head slightly before tearing his sword in an upwards arc, splitting the Vermin Lord in half from balls to brain. Thankful reels in terror as Archeon approaches him and punches him square in the face, shattering his teeth and breaking his jaw. A brutal scene like this is needed in my opinion to show that Archeon is above everyone's bullshit and won't hesitate to potentially jeopardize a potential alliance in order to show who is boss. From here, like in canon, Ikit blows up the moon, and while we know I'm not a fan of this plot point, it is a major plot point, so I cannot change it. I did make some tweaks to the impact it had, however, in my Fixing the End Times Lizardman video, so once again, feel free to check that out if you want to see how I made this moon exploding a genuinely acceptable thing that happened, or at least I tried to. From here, Ikit is not done and fires a massive missile at Nagash's floating pyramid, knocking it out of the sky. I'm going to leave this as canon as well because it's fucking hilarious. However, the next part we'll look at is Nagash's retaliation, and to be honest, I kind of like it as well, so I don't think I really need to make any changes. Sending his cursed immortal prince, Apophis, to get revenge on the Skaven and Ikit. Firstly, Apophis goes to the Hell Pit and basically raises it to the ground, as being an immortal undead aspect of death and vengeance made of scarab beetles is actually quite OP. It would make a pretty cool horror movie. After Hell Pit, Apophis went to Skaven Blight to go kill all the Skaven there, and he did a pretty good job of it. However, the Skaven were able to trap him in the lower levels of Skaven Blight, where they then shoot those levels off into the realms of chaos, where assumably Apophis is still killing stuff. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The Skaven do indeed take a part in the final battle of Mindheim. However, with Ikid and Skaven Blight with Thankul, as well as Deathmarth the Schnitz, Gorn in canon or in my version dead, 
as well as the help it destroyed, Clan Moors and Queek crushed, Clan Pestilence wrecked, it means the scale of your impact is quite small. When I cover the end of the end times in my version, I will ensure they have a strong presence during the final battle, with Screech Vermin King being a major player in it. If you're wondering what became of Tretch Craven Tale, well, Games Workshop doesn't say. But in my version, a helped abomination falls on him at a weird angle, and he ends up getting stuck in his anal orifice, where he slowly suffocates to death over the course of three days. Fitting end. Ikit and Thank will both return in Age of Sigma, and the way they do it is that they sense the world is ending soon, and they know they might die in the Cataclysm, hence Thank will is able to merge Skaven Blight with the Realms of Chaos, and ensure the Skaven race would survive intact onto the new setting. This is totally reasonable once again, so I will leave it in. The changes in this video were not as dramatic or impactful as let's say the Elves and Lizardmen, as the Skaven End Times lore was not as bad as theirs. My goal for this video was just to add some flavour and character to the Skaven End Times lore, as well as make their victory feel more deserving and not just pure cheese. The Skaven will continue to appear with new and exciting lore in my coming fix in the End Times videos, so if you love love the Ratty Boys, be sure to subscribe. If you really really love 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 the Ratty Boys, then as I said at the start of this video, Adarask, my amazing hentai man, has created a new Skaven looted masterpiece that will be available exclusively on my Patreon. If you send $1 or more, you get access to that, as well as dozens more custom artworks. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.